Nancy Tolson. And how did you get involved in this? I've been doing storytelling for basically all my life. And um, a friend of mine and I were writing children's stories. And we were trying to get them out. We were living in Detroit, but it really wasn't successful in getting the books out, but the stories were being told, you know. And so because of that, I started telling stories in different places, and people were asking me to come do stories. Then I left Detroit and I um, went to grad school in Iowa. And when I went to school in Iowa, I got with the Iowa Humanities, and I was, you know, able, just like now with the South Carolina Humanities, I was able to tell stories from time to time in between studying. And then I went to Illinois and I became um, a Rhodes Scholar, R-O-A-D-S, Rhodes Scholar um, for the Illinois Humanities and told stories. But I also started teaching because I was doing folklore and I was doing the art of storytelling. So I was teaching those courses and I got more and more and more involved in storytelling and the libraries and uh, it, it pursued wherever I went. So. Here I am. What is it about folklore that got you interested? That, that's a really good question. We really don't have time. But I really was on a very uh, anti-folklore for a very long time because I saw in school, you know, education is my base. So I saw in school how in most books they had folklore in elementary, but mythology in high school, right? Folklore were the, for the people of color, and mythology was European. And from that, I got angry, right? Then, after I realized and started going into more stories and investigating, I, and my main research is on Anansi the spider, right? And he's out of Ghana. Um, and when I realized, when I found the definition of what mythology was, what folklore was, Sometimes people got it wrong. Mythology deals with people who deal with gods, small g. And so I realized Anansi was one. You know, he dealt with Nyeme, and so many African tales had gods in them. So they were mythology. Then I realized folklore is the umbrella, and there's all these things underneath, these different titles, right? And it made me come back to folklore. And I can't get out of it. But you see folklore in everything. You know what I mean? When you're reading or watching TV, you, are, you sometimes are reminded that, hey, you know, that CSI reminded me of a tale. Don't you sometimes? It's so amazing how we, we think, oh, original thought. <laughs> and then you got, hmm, that was... You know, and so folklore is always with us because it's part of the folks, it's part of our lore, and it's very important. And so I'm never going to be out of folklore. Uh, I see folklore in different ways. And I moved here in 2014, and I got really in depth with um, black Southern folklore here and the richness that is really rich here. And so I really have been carried away. So I've taught um, Southern Black folklore at the university, and I've taught um, Black women's folklore. Um, but I'm never going to shake folklore because it's it's in us, and we all have it. We all have our tales. Do you think that the folklore tales are an important part of understanding our history? Yes, yes, and how they evolve, um, how they evolve from one place to the next. Um, what's his name? Neil Gaiman. Oh. Mm, let's just pause for That's that. That's how I was familiar with the one you mentioned earlier. His Anansi, yeah. American Gods, that could be taught a whole semester. The pieces that you could cut from that, that book alone is amazing. You've got folklore from all over the world and they're coming to say, we're still present, but we're starting to die because of these computers and what other people are now admiring and calling gods, computers, money, all these other things. But they fought, you know, and that's the whole thing with Neil Gaiman. He was saying, fight, fight for your culture. Fight to hold those things strong. And I love him. <laughs> 
But that book alone, it says it all. You know, what we have and how we've made the United States, we've made it and we have it and our folklore is so rich. What kind of stories are you gonna tell here today? I'm going to tell folklore that is from um, the low country, southern. I'll give a little more of the base of talking about African folklore because a lot of our folklore came from West Africa, brought over here in the memories of the enslaved, and then it was transported and it evolved. Yes, she was, all in one. And she found the most beautiful fabric. That fabric looked good on her skin. Ooh, 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 it was gorgeous. So much so she bought it. And then she found some lining that matched that fabric. Because you know we gotta have a nice lining, right? You know your best coat? You can see it right now, can't you? And you can show that lining. Mm. I, I want to tell you about my mom's mink. Or my mother-in-law's mink. Inside that line, ooh, out of sight. Out of sight. I'm one person right now about linings that I am about the fabric. But anyway, so the lining was just gorgeous, matching up to the fabric. She found some good thread, good thread. Not that cheap thread. She found some good sturdy thread, right? And she bought that. She found some buttons that matched so well to the fabric. She was ready. So every night, every night for a while, she was cutting it, she was cutting it making sure slow lines, making sure everything was in detail, the stitching, everything, the buttons were perfect. When it came, mm, she was ready. She put that coat on. She buttoned up. See the pretty girl in that mirror there? <laughs> she looked so good in that coat. She walked outside in that coat. Excuse me, ma'am, excuse me. Can you tell me where you got that coat from? I made this coat. You made this coat? I made this coat. Oh my goodness, can I? I want to open her coat. Every time she went out, excuse me, ma'am, can you tell me where you got that coat from? I made this coat. You made this coat? I made this coat. And the whole time through winter, she was fancing around wherever she went in that coat, and she was getting coat orders. Oh my goodness. So much so, she had to hire somebody else. Oh my goodness. Now she's become a businesswoman entrepreneur. She was happy, she had it going on. So, but you know what? She wore that coat. She wore that coat. She wore that coat out. <laughs> You know, around here, around the buttons. Y'all know what, how you wear a coat. Your favorite coat right now, think about it. May it rest in peace. Okay? So she finally decided it was time for her to take that coat off. It was getting a little bit warmer. She looked, took the coat off, laid it out. Thank you for the table. Laid it out and started cutting out the shrimp. Started hemming up places. Just a great piece of embroidery. Just the most beautiful design. And the collar was gorgeous. And she had herself a jacket. Ooh! She put that jacket on for the first time. Slipping girl in the me. She was so happy. She went outside. She looked good, had a little peppermint, you know, so it kind of bounced in the back. It's okay. She was looking good. And, excuse me, excuse me, miss, can you tell me where you got that jacket from? I made this jacket. You made this jacket? I made this jacket. I want some jackets. Oh my goodness. She started selling jackets right then and there because they loved those jackets so much. She was, she had it going on. She hired two people. She was making jackets, and she was making coats. Okay, this is going to be participation time. <laughs> she was making jackets, and she was making coats. And she was fine, fine, fine until what happened? She wore that jacket. She wore that jacket. She wore that jacket out. 
Okay, we're about to get a little bit better. With that. <laughs> but she wore that jacket out. It was starting to become shredded. It really was. It really, really was. And so mm, she took it off. But that's okay because they really got more. She decided what she was going to do. She looked at it. She really had enough fabric to make something else. And so she started cutting. She started designing. Oh my goodness. She made herself a beautiful, beautiful vest. That vest was divine. People loved that vest when she walked out. Excuse me, miss. Can you tell me where you, where did you get that vest? I made this vest. You made that vest? I made this vest. She can wear it with her skirts. She can wear it with her slides. Oh, honey, some of the dresses she can put on top. You know how I do it. She can put that on. Oh, she was looking good, good, good. I'm telling you, she was making it with that vest. That vest was just fine. Pretty girl in the mirror. She was so gorgeous, she couldn't believe it. Because of that vest. Wow. But you know what? She wore that vest. She wore that vest. She wore that vest. Ouch. That's right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Until it was nothing but shreds. She was trying to figure out all she could do. Hmm. She took it off. Trying to think about what? Hmm. What did she do with that? Well, you know what she decided? She started cutting. Her lining was beautiful. She started weaving in so many pieces that were still available. Oh my goodness. She made herself the most beautiful scarf. She was a queen. She puffed out her hair. And that scarf made her look royal. She's a pretty girl in that mirror there. She'd go outside with that beautiful scarf around her head. Excuse me, my sister, you look so beautiful today. Can you tell me where you got the scarf from? I made the scarf. You made that scarf. I made that scarf. Oh my goodness. Can I get a scarf like that? Sure you can get a scarf like that. Oh my. Excuse me, sister. Where'd you get the scarf from? I made this scarf. You made this scarf? Yes, I did. I made this scarf. Can I get a scarf like that? Yes, you can. Oh my goodness. She was getting scarf orders. Uh, I missed that one, so y'all forgot it too. <laughs> she was making scarf orders. All right now, she had four, because I didn't forget. She had four new people in her place working in her now a block long tailor shop. She had to go. But you know what? That scarf she wore, she wore that scarf. She wore that scarf. She wore that scarf. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, she did. And it became pretty like threads, shreds. And so she laid it out. She realized she could make something else. Yes, she did. <laughs> she made the most gorgeous flower earrings that looked like they were real. People would come up and say, I thought it's real. Oh, they're not real flowers. Oh, they're beautiful. What jewelry store did you go to to get those flower earrings? She said, I made those flower earrings. You made those flower I made these flower earrings. My goodness, they're so beautiful. Thank you. And every place she went, she started getting oh. earring orders. That's right. Come on now. <laughs> she started getting earring orders. And she worked those earrings, and she wore those earrings, and she wore those earrings. Stop it. It's not your turn. <laughs> and she wore those earrings. Out. That's right. And all that was left was this story. Oh. Oh. Oh.